Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Surrett. I just wanted to bring you a word of encouragement today. The word is found in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. This is a word where David inquired of the Lord. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. In 2 Samuel, David came to the Lord and he says that, um, Shall I go up to the cities of Judah? And the Lord says to him, Go up. And David says, where shall I go up? And he says to David, to Hebron. The reason why this word got my attention is because good counsel is very important. My, my title for encouragement today is Seek Good Counsel. See, David seek, inquire the counsel of the Lord. David inquired the counsel of the Lord. That's what that scripture is about. The whole chapter is about David getting um, anointed to become king because he was at the right place at the right time. He inquired the counsel of somebody who had wisdom, somebody who had who cared for him, who loved him, and who would never lead him to the wrong direction. It's important that we seek good counsel. In this scripture, David didn't make a decision. It didn't say that David made a decision by himself. He said he came to the Lord and asked God, where should he go and what should he do? And because he inquired good counsel, he was able to do the will of God and enter into his destiny. Um, so much happened because David inquired the presence of God, inquired God in his decision. I want to ask you today to make a decision in your life to always seek the presence of God. You see, it's not enough for us to just be Christians. It's not enough for you to just be ordinary. It's not enough for you to just, you know, um, talk to people that you do love or people that you do know. You have to always seek the presence of God. The presence of God is really important in your life. As a young Christian or a mature or adult, it doesn't matter what level you are in your Christian walk with God, it's important that you seek the counsel of the Lord. David seek the counsel of the Lord and he was at the right place to be found, to be ordained and to be appointed into his destiny. If you and I don't seek the counsel of God, we will not be at the right place and we will not be um, able to enter into our destiny. It's so easy for us to fall on the sidelines and pick up the call, uh, phone, call a friend or call somebody before we pray. It's really, really easy for us not to seek God in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening. There's no set stone. It's really wonderful if you can get up in the morning and seek God in the morning when you up and in the, your days is fresh, the, the time is fresh, um, you don't have interruption in your day, you don't have anybody, you know, like um, interrupting you, but it's great if you can do that. But the, what's really important is whether you seek him in the morning or you seek him in the evening or at night, what's important is that you seek his face because without his face, you will not be at the right place at the right time. If you read the whole chapter 2 of 2 Samuel, you see that David um, get ordained, get anointed to become king over Judah, over the house of Judah, over um, and his kingdom began at that place where he told, where he asked the Lord, where should he go? Um, when you're seeking God, it's important for you to be silent at some point. You know, a lot of times we enter into his presence and then we just start talking, 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 talking. I mean, it's really a nice if you have a lot in your heart. I believe that, you know, I have had this experience myself. When I haven't talked to God in a while, a while for me is like, I don't know, three, four days a week. A week is like eternity for me, you know? Um, because when you are in ministry or when you're doing anything in the kingdom, you can't stay without the presence of God. But I find that I talk the most when I've had less time with God. It's like I'm thirsty and it's like I can't wait to get there. And, and as soon as I get there and then I'm like, I can't stop talking. I can't stop. I can't. And I have so much to say. You know why? Because I haven't been with him. So if you find yourself always talking whenever you are in the time of prayer or you are in the presence of God or you take some time aside, whether it be in your closet or 
you know, in your living room where there is no distractions or no people or, in, you know, going up and down or no television, even put turning off your phone. You know, you have to do that too. At some point, you have to shut down the social networking movement in your life and so you can seek good counsel. And if you find yourself unable to stop talking, me naturally, I like to talk. People just said, I'm always talking. I'm sure God is used to that by now. But sometimes, you know, when I've spent enough time seeking him, like in his presence, I don't talk too much. You know, I mean, I just, I come in and then I said, hi, Lord, how you doing? It's really as simple as that. And, and people say that, oh, you know, I, I, I do the prayers. And then people call me and said, how do you pray like that? How come you can say so many words at one time? And well, you see, the anointing empowers you to be able to do the work. And then when you put it into practice all the time, you know, it's like developing a muscle. It just get big and big and big. It gets stronger and stronger. I've been practicing praying with, you know, with that anointing for a while now. But when you are really in his presence, you know, and you, you've spent time with him and you've seek him before, there's nothing to say. You just relax and, and you just learn to rest in his arm. You just learn to, to be at peace. And then you hear his voice and depending on if you need something, if you have a question, this is like a good time to ask him a question. Lord, um, how does this work for me? How am I going to do that? And sometimes you don't hear the answers right away. It does not mean that you were not praying or you didn't believe or you were in sin. Truth be told is um, I find that my most difficult time, my most troubling days are the days that I find the presence of God even stronger in my life. Meaning like um, when I'm dealing with a difficult situation or I've done something that I shouldn't have done or, you know, I find that Romans 5, 22 really comes into play where it says that, you know, in my weakness, God give me more strength. He gives me more to go on. He gives me the ability to move forward in my weakness. So even in my weakness, I go to the Lord and sometimes I'm not talking, I'm crying. You know, sometimes I'm not crying, I'm laughing. You know, I mean, all of these different type of emotional expressions that when you are in his presence and you know you're with him and you know, like, you know, like the air, like the breath that you take in your body, you know that he's listening and he's there with you. You can express yourself. You don't have to be afraid of anything. You don't have to be afraid of people laughing or saying that you're not saying the right thing or, you know, but the bottom line is that you get to enter into his presence. It's important for us to connect with God on a daily basis. It's important for us to be with him, no matter whether you are able to do it in the morning or at night. And the reason why I'm saying in the morning or at night, I recently, you know, this is, this is an area for me where it's been really, really challenging. Um, sitting down, I'm, 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 my mind moves so fast. I'm one that my, you know, I don't, I look quiet on the outside. People always think that I'm quiet, but I'm always thinking about something. When I'm not thinking, I'm watching and I'm looking how things work and I'm listening and, you know, I'm not always listening to people's voice sometimes. I, I'm, I've learned to, you know, to just put people out of my mind, out of my head because I need my space up here. You know, you have to develop your own space, your own, your own, you have to know yourself and you have to know what you're able to handle. But the reason why I said that, you know, whether you seek him in the morning or at night is because God has taught me something recently that I want to share with you in reference to the scripture. You know, this scripture says that David seek the presence of the Lord and he got ordained and he's entered into his destiny and he became king and he stepped into his position. Now, if David had not gone and seek the Lord, he would have never entered into his destiny. He would have been at the wrong place at the wrong time. And why I'm saying it doesn't matter whether you do it in the morning. If you're comfortable doing it in the morning, is great. If you're comfortable doing it at night, it's great. The reason why I'm saying that is because that was a challenge for me. And God has totally freed me. I mean, the guilt and the, the embarrassment of like, Lord Jesus Christ. People see me in ministry. They see me praying. They see me preaching. They think like I'm always in prayer. I'm not always in prayer. I'm not always in his presence. I'm not always. I mean, I know I am in his presence always. According to his word, that says he never leave me nor forsake me. I understand the word. And what I mean is that I'm not always active speaking to him, taking time aside, separating myself from things and you know, uh, I'm not always doing that. So that was bothering me for the longest. And recently God just like gave me a total breakthrough 
where he says, well, if you cannot, there are certain type of weakness in you. It's not a weakness that, that has to do with habitual sin. If you understand habitual sins, sin, uh, habitual sins are lying, stealing, thiefing, committing adultery, fornicating. These are called habitual sin, idol worshiping, all of this stuff that causes you to go against the will of God. But if you're not in those practice, there are some things that are still and sin, because if you know to do right, according to James chapter two, you don't do it. God still see that as wrong. And because we are to be obedient children all the time. So I was saying, God, I need to break this. It's a habit. It was a bad habit of not sitting with him all the time or when, I, you know, every day I needed to sit with the Lord every day. So recently God gave me like this awesome breakthrough. And the reason why I took time to explain that, because it's not every weakness that if you can beat your enemy, you must join your enemy. <laughs> It's not every enemy, okay? Some enemies, you must never join them. Run away and keep running. And I'm talking about your enemies within you, okay? But this enemy that was within me is particularly with time. And my time is flexible. I work at different hours. I do things different hours. Some days, uh, you know, I'm busy in the morning. Some days I'm busy at night. And, and so I was like, God, when do I find time with you? The Lord says, it really doesn't matter. Truth be told is the best time to seek Lord is early in the morning. And guess what time I go to sleep? At two o'clock, three o'clock every day. I don't make it to my bed until two, three o'clock in the morning. So the Lord says to me, why don't you seek me within like 12 midnight around this time that you awake why don't you spend that time with me that is still in the morning and I actually never thought about it this way and I said wow I can do this and it's been really really powerful my spiritual life my spiritual walk is um stronger I feel stronger um you have to understand the difference between working and walking with God. I work in the ministry. I assist people in the ministry, but my walk with God is a different thing. You got to have your own personal relationship with God and you have to seek God's face in order for that relationship to develop, to get stronger, to grow. You have to be in his presence. And truth be told is it really is not about where and how, but it's about the fact that you do. And the reason why it's not about that, because Jesus says the temple developed, the temple was split in two. There is no, nothing holding you back from coming to God. Nobody can stop you. You can speak to God in the bus stop. You can speak to him while you are um, riding the bus. You can speak to him on your way to work in the car. Or if you don't drive, you could speak to him while you're walking. You could, whatever. I, the best moments that I've had with the Lord was washing when I was washing dishes. Okay. I've had the Holy Ghost come down on me, speaking in tongue and fire coming down and new sound coming from heaven. And I had that experience one time with my sister. And then it was an amazing experience because we were just cooking. We were cooking food. I don't know if it was because the food was so good. We were so happy and all of a sudden we just started dancing and praising and singing and, and shouting and next thing you know, prayer came. We cast out devils and man, it was, it were like, and then we looked at each other and go, oh my God, did I just had a visitation? Yeah. Yeah. We just had a visitation. It's called a visitation. Uh huh. The best time of your life is the time where you are so relaxed and you can be with your father. Your heavenly father is waiting for you and you cannot let blockage, you know, hinder you from entering into your destiny. Your time with him is really precious. It's a matter of your life being met for full, you know, living a full life, living on a fulfillment of his grace. It's a matter of you understanding how much he loves you and he cares for you and he wants to spend time with you. Don't let people stop you. Don't let sin get in your way. If anything is when you have fallen, that's when you must run to the throne of God, to the altar. Run to him. Wherever you are, you can create your own altar. I love the way Jesus put it in Matthew. He says that open the door and shut it behind you and seek your father in the closed room and he will reward you out and open. He didn't say that you know, wait until you get to the church. He didn't say, you know, wait until you can call sister so-and-so or your pastor, get permission from your pastor first, or he, you know, or, um, talk to somebody in the church first. He didn't say none of that stuff. He says, go into the room, shut the door <laughs> behind you. Wherever you are is where your room is. Your heart, I call it the heart is my room. 
and I speak to my Heavenly Father all day long, all the time, wherever I am. So I encourage you today, seek the face of the Lord. Come seek after his counsel first before you even go and call anybody. I'm not saying that it's not good to talk to people and seek counsel, but I'm saying it's important to go to God first and seek God's face and you'll see how much he will bless you. I hope this was a very, very good blessing word to you today. And I hope that this word encourage you to continue. Do not let no blockage, anything get in your way. Just seek the face of God and you will see how your life will transform. God bless you. I'm Pastor Surrett.